Hey there, welcome back to another video here on Wrist Watch Revival. My name is Marshall. It's nice to have you along. Thanks so much for joining me. So today, <laughs> I did something... Well, we're going to find out if it was stupid or not. <laughs> so it turns out that in the watch hobby, like working on watches hobby, tools, right? You're looking up tools. You're like, oh, I'm going to get some tweezers. I'm going to get some screwdrivers. You kind of get the basics under you. But there's a lot of weird tools. There's a lot of tools that maybe um, you can't buy anymore. Or if they are made, they're super, super expensive. Those kind of things. And so where do you go? Well, eBay. You find, you're looking for used kind of vintage antique style tools. I mean, these things are old. And sometimes it can be a bit of a gamble. And that's what I did this time. So I just got a package in. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really know what's in it. I, so I bought it off of eBay and there was like a bunch of crappy pictures of old watchmakers tools and it was like a pretty good deal and I put in a bid thinking I probably wouldn't win but then I did which is sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing and we're going to find out right now which one it was. Um, we're going to open this thing up and get into it and see what tools we have and there's some I'm probably not even going to know what they are um, but whatever, it wasn't too much and... Uh, yeah, let's see what we've got in the box here. Okay. Let's get into this. Yeah, it's always funny on eBay when you take a chance. I've had it go really well for me a few times, and of course I've had it backfire uh, numerous times as well. This looks pretty well packed at least. All right, here's some stuff. All right, here, let me just start putting this stuff on the table and we'll kind of get an idea. All right, here's something. I don't know what that is. That looks kind of cool, but I don't know what it is either. What else? One of these? Yeah, you got to have one of those. Or, I guess, three of these. Pivot tool. Seems like bad advice. Ooh, this box looks really old. Yeah, see, this is what I mean. Like, look at this thing. Well, I don't even know what's in there, but whenever it was made, it was not recently. They do not make boxes that look like that. And same with this one. This is actually kind of a pretty box. Wow, there's a ton of stuff in here, actually. I didn't realize I got this much. But whatever, I'll take it. Another very old looking box. Made in Switzerland. Okay, I believe you. And that looks like that's it for that. So let's get the box out of the way. And let's just start jamming here and see what we got in these things. Um, sure, we'll start with this red one. What is this? Ooh, wow. That's sharp. Ooh, this thing's sharp. What is going on? Hmm. You know, hmm, is this in a like some type of adjuster for Hmm, I don't know what this thing does. Yeah, we'll have to figure that one out, I guess, at some point. Actually, I'll put it back in here because I'll forget where it goes. Sweet box though. Um let's see what's in here. Oh, great, great, great. Right. Okay. So this, now that I see it, is actually why I bought this. Cool. This, yeah, cool. <laughs> this is actually what I was hoping it would be. So what these are, um, are these are for working on jewel settings on old watches, particularly um, some of the pocket watches that I've worked on before. And basically what they have is they have what they call a rub-in jewel. And a rub-in jewel uses soft metal around the edge of it. Like if, if this thing was where the jewel goes, there's soft metal around the edge. And you put the jewel in and then you use these, imagine a very large one of these, that sits on here and can turn and it pushes the metal back in around the jewel. And then, let's see if we got, that's not it. Yes, like this. So these ones allow you to, again, imagine a very big version of this where it would come in underneath where that metal's at and you turn it and it folds the metal out like this. Then you can remove the jewel, replace it, and use one of these other ones to, uh, to push the metal back down. It's like soft metal. I haven't had to actually do one of those yet. 
But in order to do them, you need these. So score. So already I'm happy because I didn't, like I said, I didn't pay much for this and I didn't um, have very high expectations. But this was the one thing that I recognized in the photos as what I thought looked like these jewel spreader things. And it looks like they are. So I am happy with that. I'll have those, you know, in case I ever need them or whatever. Uh, what is this? Made in Switzerland. Zeitz. This looks like a lathe, something lathe related. What is this? Oh, it's a little, oh. There's little tiny baby, looks like little collets maybe in there. But these look like they go on the end of a lathe. Like this looks like a chuck for a lathe. Where you put the thing that you want to work on in there and then it spins. Well, I don't have a lathe. So I don't think that this is something that I can really use particularly, but whatever. Is this? There we go. Okay, I looked at those. I got what looks to be three of these. Let's just take a look at them. I don't actually know what this is. Rockford, Illinois. Well, this was made in the USA. That's kind of cool, I guess. Since I live in the United States and we don't make anything anymore. But I'm told at one point that we did. I don't know what this is. This looks like it's made some very fine adjustments here on these endpoints. Maybe it's a gauge or a measuring tool of some sort. By the way, if you do know what the heck these are, you know what to do. 11. Chime in down below and uh, in the comments and let me know what these things are because I don't know. What do we have in here? Aha. Uh -huh. Just what I've always wanted. Two pieces of metal. Yep. That's metal. All right. Don't know what that is. And what was this? This is a gauge of some sort, I assume. France. Yeah, this does look like a gauge, like it gets tinier and tinier as you go down this line here. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know what any of this stuff is. I wonder if this has to do with this other leaven thing. These are both that. I don't know. This does look like it's an attachment for something else, though, right? Like it goes on to something. Maybe not. Yeah, don't know what those are either. What else? Is there anything left? Yeah, these. Oh, pivot tool. So these look like some type of end attachments for a pivot tool. I don't know what that is, though. It's like some type of drill or something, maybe. I wonder if these would fit in my staking tool, and that's what they're for. They look like they're about the right size. That would be kind of cool. I could have extra things for my staking tool. All right, well, that looks like everything that I got out of this. Again, this is the main thing. Um, the other stuff is like whatever, but these are what I wanted. Uh, and I had forgotten. It's kind of funny how that works. Like you finally get it from eBay and then you're like, what did I order again? But I did know, of course, that I had ordered these random, <laughs> apparently very random tools. So yeah, if you happen to know what these are, let me know. Otherwise, uh, thanks so much for coming along through my uh, mystery box of tools. And uh, we'll see you next time here on Wristwatch Revival. Bye-bye.